Hey guys, welcome back. The purpose of this video is I just want to teach you about two different kinds of circuits. And that's so we can do a couple of our assignments where we have to build circuits that use uh, these ideas. And those two different kinds of circuits are called parallel and series. Uh, basically, for both of these circuits, we're going to get more than one thing to use electricity. Uh, so we'll have a circuit that multiple LEDs, for example, will work at the same time. And we're going to show you just how both of these things work. But before we get into that, let's kind of look at uh, the real quick what they mean. So you can see parallel circuit. We're going to build those ones up here on the top. A parallel circuit gets multiple things to work because it splits the current. So we're going to split the current into a couple different paths uh, when we're doing a parallel circuit. Uh, and a series, on the other hand, what it does is it continues the current. So it's going to have lots of different things on the same path. So one thing will get the current and then pass it to the next thing and then pass it to the next thing. It's just going to continue the current on the same path. So let's just go ahead and see the setup that I have so far. Uh, you can see I have my power supply. All ready to go. Positive is plugged into positive. Negative is plugged into negative. It does have an active uh, power connection. Um, it is off right now. Just as a reminder, I, for when you build your actual circuits, you need to show them to me first so that I can look them over. I'll determine if they're safe and if they look good, I'll let you go plug it in at your own table. All right, so just kind of looking at this. Let's go ahead and start off on the series circuit. Now, if you remember, series is just going to continue the current on one path. So this is gonna start like uh, we normally do. We'll take a red wire here, it doesn't matter the color, and I'm going to give one of my rows positive current. So that means I plug one end of my wire into the positive row of the breadboard, and then the other wire end of the wire got plugged into row 15. That means row 15 now has positive current, okay? And just like before, we want to kind of weaken that current. That current is a little too strong for an LED. So the thing that we use to do that is uh, a resistor here. So one end of the resistor is going to be plugged into row 15, and then the other end of the resistor looks like it got plugged into row 20. So that means this positive current has gone through this red wire into row 15. The resistor takes the positive current out of row 15. That positive current flows through the resistor. And then that resistor puts the positive current into row 20. We're ready for our LEDs now. Okay, so I'll take my first LED. And remember, LEDs have a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is what gets the positive current. Row 20 has that positive current, so I'm going to plug the long leg of that LED into row 20, and then the other end of that LED, the short end of that LED, looks like it's going to go right there into row 23. So that means row 23 has the leftover current from this LED. So the current has gone through this LED, it's now into row 23. So in the last assignment, we took a wire and we hooked up that row to the negative and we just got that one LED to work. Well, what we're going to do instead of sending that uh, current right back to negative is we're going to force it to go through our second LED first. So that means if I look at row 23, that still has positive current. So we're going to have that positive current go through our second LED. So that means row 23 needs to be attached to the long end of this LED. And then the short end of this LED looks like it gets plugged into row 25. That means 25 has that positive current. We have got current to go through multiple things on one path. That's called a series circuit. Uh, so just one more time, that current goes through the red wire first, and then it goes through the resistor into row 20. Uh, this LED takes that positive current, has it go through the LED into row 23. The second LED takes that positive current out of 23. That current goes through the LED and then puts that positive current into row 25. So the only thing, if I want both these lights to turn on, uh, is to have row 25 
hooked up to the negative so that positive current has a place to go. So let's turn on our switch here and see how that works out. Well, there you go. You can see that both LEDs turn on. So that current has gone through, actually it's gone through a few different things here in series. It's gone through this red wire and then some the things with resistance, it's gone through this resistor and then it went through this LED and then it went through this LED. So there are three things in this one path that have resistance. So all three of these things we would say are attached in series. All right, I'm gonna turn that off. All right, so that's what a series circuit will look like. It has one path from positive to negative and there's lots of things on that one path because it just continues the current. So let's look at parallel where it splits the current. So this is gonna start off pretty similar. We'll go kind of on the right side of the breadboard now. I'll take uh, a wire I'll attach one end to the positive and then I'll attach another end. Let's put it into row 50. So row 50 has that positive current now, but here's where it's gonna be different. Instead of having one path with lots of things on it, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna split that current into two different paths now. So we're gonna take a resistor because our current needs to go through a resistor to, to weaken itself. And one end will be plugged into row 50, and the other end will be plugged into row 45. That means row 45 has the weakened positive current now. And I'm gonna take a second resistor, I'm gonna plug one end into row 50, and the other end, I'm gonna plug into row 55. That means row 55, and I'm just gonna fix this first resistor a little bit there. That means row 55 also has weakened current. Right, so row 55 also has that weakened current. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two LEDs now. So row 45 has positive current. That means the long end of this LED is gonna be plugged into row 45. And the short end of that LED looks like it gets plugged into row 42. And on my second LED, I have a long leg and a short leg. I'm not gonna plug it in over here though. I'm gonna plug it in to this resistor because these resistors split the current. So the current went into row 50 and then these two resistors split it into two different places. The first resistor puts it into row 45. The second resistor puts it into row 55. So that means row 55 has weakened positive current. That means row 55 is gonna be attached to the long leg of this LED here. So I'll put the long leg of that LED into row 55 and it looks like the short leg of that LED went into row 58. Okay, so if I try to turn these on, you can see my red LEDs came on, but my blue ones did not. And that is because I need to finish the circuit. So over here with this first LED, the positive current that's in row 42, it needs to go back to negative so that it flows. Remember, we have to have a path from positive to negative to let the current flow through it. And then over here, I've got row 58 also needs a connection to negative, right? Because remember, we split, so we split, those, uh, split the current into two, so it's like we made two different circuits right there on row 50. And so that second path needs a path back to negative two. So now let's turn it on and see if everything works. And yes, you can see that it does. And I hope you can see this on the camera. I'm kind of looking at my screen. And, and if you notice, these two blue LEDs are growing more, glowing more brightly than these two red LEDs. Do you have a guess why? Well, that's because these two red LEDs have to share current. So remember, anything with resistance weakens current. So this current on the series side goes through the wire and then it goes through the resistor so it gets weaker. And then this first LED takes that leftover current and uses some of it. That means this is also a resistor. It's weakening the current. So this LED takes it from row 20, puts it into row 23, and by the time the current gets into row 23, its voltage is lower, it's weakened the current. And so that means this second LED is grabbing the leftovers from the first LED, 
And it is also using that current. That means this second LED also has resistance. So that means there's one, two, three things with resistance on that path. That means all three of these things are weakening the current and then it passes back over here, okay? Whereas over here, right, we split that five volts and then we created two different paths for that uh, current to go through. We have path number one, which is this LED, and then path number two, which is this LED. These two LEDs really don't have anything to do with each other. They're, so one LED over here is not like getting the leftovers from the first LED. Okay. 